Hi, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Marshall. Welcome to Tumble, the show where we explore stories of science discovery. Today, we're shooting for the moon. Turns out that giant cheese wheel in the sky is extremely important for life on Earth. We're going to find out how the moon came to be and what would happen if it didn't exist. Also, stay tuned for a special treat at the end of the episode. Hi, my name is Andrew, and I'm eight years old. My question was, what would happen if there was no moon? Lots of people take the moon for granted, like me, but not Andrew. One day, uh, I just thought of the moon, and I wonder what we would do without it. And it's just like this big round ball of cheese. The moon is actually not made out of cheese. <laughs> you imagine it would probably go bad and smell really bad. <laughs> <laughs> we'll smell it all the way on Earth. <laughs> Indeed we would. But I think Andrew knows that. What I think would happen is I think there would be no waves. Yes, yeah, so we know the moon affects the tides, like how the waves come up and down on beaches. And it provides light at night. Don't forget werewolves. They would just stay in their human form, and we'd never know they were actually wolves without a full moon. Seriously, though, what would happen if the moon didn't exist? To get the answer, I went outside and found a rocket scientist. So we're sitting here in Barcelona in the middle of a plaza. And can you tell me your name and title? Okay, my name is Miquel Sureda. And yeah, I had a PhD on space propulsion. You didn't just find a rocket scientist walking down the street. You're right, I didn't. I emailed him beforehand, and we decided that the easiest place to meet was at a cafe on the plaza near our house. Okay, so what did Miquel say? Okay, this is a very interesting question. So first of all, it's completely clear that without the moon, uh, the Earth would be a, com a, a completely different planet. So the Earth would be completely different? That's a bold statement right there. Yeah, the moon isn't just Earth's casual friend. It has a huge influence on our planet. We are attracting the moon because the, the Earth is a big planet and is attracting the moon, and that's why the moon is going around the Earth. But in the same way, the moon, the moon is attracting the Earth, and exactly with the, si with the same amount of force. So the moon and the Earth are like BFFs, best friends forever. Yes, and gravity has kept them going strong for many, 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 many years. And because of that gravitational attraction, the moon plays a really important role in our everyday life. So not just every night? Every single moment. Miguel broke down what would happen if we didn't have the moon. The more easy answer is we would have no tides or no uh, that big tides, but there are other consequences. So Andrew was right. Mikkel said that there would be no big tides. Yeah. The oceans are a huge mass of water on our planet, and the moon's gravitational pull makes the tides big. But if the moon disappeared, there would still be waves because our sun also pulls on our water. We would have tides, but they would be about a third of the size that the one we have now. So if the tides were like 75% smaller, that would have a big impact on surfing. And ocean life and ocean ecosystems. Like all those sea stars and tide pools would have to move a little closer to the shore. <laughs> Take their little knapsacks on their backs. I guess there's no moon, guys. <laughs> Time to move in. <laughs> so what are the other consequences? The day would be really, really, really shorter because the moon has been stopping the Earth, the rotation of the Earth. So probably the day would be maybe only five, six hours long. Maybe one hour of school per day and one nap per day. I don't know, it, but, but life would be very different. Whoa, only one nap per day? I couldn't deal. The point is... The moon plays a big role in controlling how Earth rotates on its axis. The axis is that invisible line from pole to pole that our planet spins around. It's tilted at 23 degrees consistently, day after day, never changing. Without the moon, the rotational axis would be wobbling like chaotically, maybe from zero degrees to 90 degrees, which means that uh, sometimes the coldest part of the Earth will be the poles, like now, but sometimes the poles will be 
like the hottest parts. So without the moon's gravitational pull keeping us stable, we'd just be one of those total mess planets, never getting its life together. <laughs> I know, and that's what satellite friends are for, right? Keeping you on your axis. <laughs> If we didn't have the moon, we'd have glaciers in the Sahara Desert and desert in Antarctica. Plus, our seasons would just be all out of whack. So we can say that the moon is kind of a climate regulator. Without the moon, the temperature and the seasons on Earth would be chaos. Well, I could imagine that would have a pretty big effect on animals and plants. Like, if you couldn't plan migration patterns, I mean, there wouldn't be a pattern. You'd just be running around all over the surface <laughs> of the Earth. Yeah. And, Mikkel says, without the moon, there would be no humans. Well, that's too bad. Why? <laughs> Scientists think that the moon helped create an atmosphere where life as we know it could evolve. Maybe there will be life, but not the kind of life we have now. And pro um, sh uh, surely no human beings. Wow, so we really owe our existence to the moon, in part. Uh, absolutely. The Earth is the right size, in the right place, and with the right satellite, with the right moon, which is just incredible. I mean, yes, that's incredible. But how did we get this perfectly sized moon, and how do we know all this stuff? We are not sure why we have this strange big moon. Oh, so we just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no. He's saying that scientists are not 100% certain. But there are a lot of theories or hypotheses. The most commonly accepted one is called the giant impact theory. Ooh, that sounds like a good band name. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, it's really cool. So the theory goes that four and a half billion years ago, when the solar system was the solar system version of a baby, the Earth lived in a much more dangerous neighborhood. <laughs> Lots of gangs patrolling the street, beating up on smaller planets, <laughs> traveling the mean orbits of our solar system. I mean, basically, the Earth was cold, rocky, and it was getting hit by anything and everything in its path. Until one day, everything changed. The Earth collided with a huge planetary body about the size of Mars. This collision, it could have been in many different angles and with many different velocities, and almost all of them, they would have not created a moon, but by chance, this collision was with the right angle, right velocities. So it made the moon? Yeah. This planet-like object called Theia basically smashed a huge chunk out of the Earth. All the debris went swirling around and around together, caught up in Earth's gravitational pull. Some scientists argue that there might have been two separate collisions within two days, but the end result was that the debris came into a ball and formed our moon. Did scientists just make it up because they like smashing big things together? I mean, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's actual evidence to support it, though, right? The first thing that uh, supports this idea is that when we went to the moon and we were able to send back rocks from the moon, they analyzed and they realized that the composition of the rocks on the moon is kind of really similar when astronauts were landing on the moon back in the 1960s and 70s, they collected rocks to get clues about how the moon was made. I thought those were just cool souvenirs you could have. Me too, <laughs> honestly. But it turns out that the moon rocks have a very similar chemistry to the rocks found on Earth. You say, yeah, wow, look at that. The moon is kind of similar or the same uh, material than the mantle of the Earth. And then you start thinking, OK, maybe it, it comes from there. That gave scientists an idea of how powerful the impact would have to have been to cut through the Earth's crust and pick up bits of the mantle beneath it. It was not just a scratch on the crust, it, 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 it kind of destroyed the Earth itself. Well, that sounds kind of intense, but how can we really say that that's true? Well, you can run computer simulations or models of what the impact would have looked like. Looking at the impact and the physics of the impact, it really works. Science normally it works with not with the last, but with the best theory we have so far. And that's kind of what, what we are thinking now. 
So he's saying that at any point, someone could propose a new idea of how the moon formed, and we'd rewrite that story you just told. If they have good enough evidence, Mikkel is a big supporter of going back to the moon and getting more rocks to give us better clues. But we know for sure there was a time when Earth didn't have a moon. Right, and we also know for sure that the moon is slowly moving away from us. Many, many million years ago, the moon was closer than it's now. And, and, and actually, the moon is just going farther and farther every, every, every day. Oh, wow. I did not know that. And actually, it's moving about four centimeters per year away from us, which is it's, it's something that we, we can measure. Wait, so the, the moon is drifting away? It's leaving us? <laughs> It's just the way that things go. Over hundreds of thousands of years, it means that the changes we learned about at the start of the show will actually happen. Tides will get smaller, days will get shorter, and werewolves won't have as much time to hunt. Poor werewolves. (laughs) But how do we know this is happening? The first uh, humans that went to the moon, they placed uh, mirrors on the moon facing the Earth. So now, from here, we just have to fire lasers to these mirrors, and we can measure the distance between the Earth and the moon very, very, very precisely. So we are seeing this. Oh my god, that is so cool. (laughs) We're actually firing lasers at the moon. Just like, no big deal, just firing a laser at the moon. (laughs) Just checking things out. Yeah, getting that mirror onto the moon was probably the bigger deal. The idea of mirrors and lasers is kind of a simple technology. It's the same that contractors use to measure houses, for example. If you want to upgrade from a tape measure. Yeah, because we don't have a big enough tape measure to get to the moon. (laughs) This one goes to 200,000 miles and four inches. And then it snaps back really hard. Like, oh, I just moved right out of that distance. We can't know. I think the point is that now is the time to stop taking the moon for granted. It's sort of mind-blowing how many things had to come together in when you talked about, you know, the small, small chance that the moon could be made in such the exact way that it was. It seems just beyond comprehension of how we're here right now on a plaza in Barcelona talking about it. <laughs> that's com- and looking at the, and the beautiful uh, moon. Yeah, 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 that's, that's, that's amazing. And we can say that the universe just made us because it needs someone to understand it. Do you wonder what our planet would be like without something important? <laughs> like, what if we had no sun or no oceans? How would life be different? Draw us a picture of what you think would happen. Then send it to us at tumblepodcasts at gmail.com and we'll share them with all of our listeners. So now for a truly special treat. We've teamed up with What If World, a storytelling podcast that tells off-the-cuff stories for kids. It is such a funny show. It is really authentically funny. It doesn't matter what age you are. Even if you're a 38-year-old child like me. (laughs) So we gave Andrew's question to Mr. Eric, the host, and then we actually got to play a part in making up the story. We're going to give you a little taste of what that sounded like. Now, Morshworth and Lornsey didn't really expect for anything to happen when they taunted the moon, but they were surprised to see it suddenly slip out of orbit. It was one of those days where the morning moon was just ever so slightly shining in the sky, and it got farther and farther away until they couldn't see it anymore. Huh, that was surprisingly effective. Just then, Lornsey and Morshworth's mom walked right in to get them ready for school. All right, kids, it's time to go to school. Honey, I'm not sure if we all need to head to school anymore. Have you noticed there's no moon? That kind of changes the whole structure of the day, right? Oh my god, as a stay-at-home astronomer, I am shocked, surprised, and somewhat interested and curious about what's happening right now. Yeah, oh well. <clears throat> How did this happen? Did you guys see anything? I was getting dressed. It was Morshworth's idea. Morshworth, what did you do? We, we sort of 
yelled at the moon and called it bad names. You really need to be getting to school, moon or no moon. You can hear the rest at What If World, which you can find wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks to Mikkel Sureda, rocket scientist, science communicator, and lecturer at the Polytechnical University of Catalonia. Also, thanks to Andrew for his awesome question. If you'd like to send us a science question, email us at tumblepodcast at gmail.com or use the contact form on our website, sciencepodcastforkids.com. That's where you'll also find more information about some of the lunar science we talked about today on our blog. A huge thanks this week to our new patrons, Aaron, Etta, and Noah Zwiehorn, who pledged on my birthday, Austin from Warneat, Australia, the dinosaur-obsessed science lover, Sebastian from Melbourne, Australia, Finley and Gray Mecca from Georgetown, Texas, and five-year-old Kojo from London, who says he is our number one fan. If you'd like to join these awesome people, make a pledge on patreon.com slash tumblepodcast today. We cannot say enough about how much your pledges help us make the show. You also get awesome rewards when you sign up, so check it out today. Sarah Lentz is our editor. I'm Lindsay Patterson, and I wrote and produced this show. And I'm Marshall Escamilla, and I make all of the music. Thanks for listening, and join us next time for more stories of science discovery.